This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and find Jesus. And the Easter Bunny. And like a couple of people later on were like, oh, I found a dinosaur. And I was like, that was me. Be kind to everyone. You have no idea what kind of fight they're fighting. It's weird to see all these people coming out of hibernation. Yeah. You know, like all of a sudden the streets are just packed full of people. Uh Oh, I already know the Charleston, but I'll teach you. In the next week and a half or so. (laughs) IFAF, Idaho Falls Weekly Informal Infotainment with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. On this episode, spring is sprunging. Springin? It really is. Springin is sprungin. We'll cover everything <laughs> noteworthy that happened last week and a bunch of stuff happening this week and weeks to come, including Easter egg hunts, uh, Easter bunny scavenger hunt. Ooh. Do you need a little Jesus in your life? A speakeasy soiree with the Idaho Falls Chamber of Commerce. Ooh la la. And just, we could laundry list the events for you, or you can just listen. Welcome to the podcast that's coming up faster than the Maverick by Bish's RV in Idaho Falls. Yeah, those things really spring up, don't they? I'm sure they've got a system down by now, but it's just incredible Mm -hmm. to watch. Right, right. Well, and especially since all of them look the same. Mm -hmm. You know, like they've got that architecture down packed. Yeah, especially (laughs) after uh, purchasing Come and Go. Yeah, yeah. They they just keep coming and coming and coming hard and fast. Mm -hmm. Really impressive, you guys. (laughs) So glad they're changing the name. (laughs) Yeah. We're coming up higher than the price of gas. Yeah, 16 cents in one weekend, right? Come on, man. Anyway, check this out. This is kind of cool. This is a little map of where we're being listened to. East Idaho, of course. Mm -hmm. Salt Lake City, Denver, Vegas, LA, Seattle, San Francisco, Mexico City, and surprisingly, a bunch of places in the Midwest and East Coast, even the Dominican Republic. Whoa. That's cool. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you don't mind, hit like, subscribe, comment, follow, any little bit that'll get you in our algorithm or algorithm in you, (laughs) however that works. Well, everyone likes a little rhythm in in them, don't they? You know? (laughs) And that's two. Two innuendos in two minutes. Can we go for three? Let's see. Let's see. (laughs) Uh, I am still in a sugary carb coma. I know. I know. Well, and pasta for dinner was probably not the best choice. (laughs) Our... uh, our Girl Scout cookie mini sewed in between episode 36 and this episode 37 is out. You can check it and learn the difference between ABC Bakers, which we are now in East Idaho, uh-huh. and Little Brownie Bakers that we used to be. Uh, and Kevin, by the way, you got a nice little package coming your way. For Always you, looking forward to that. For you and the family. Thank you yeah. so much for that. You know, I gave a bunch of uh, Girl Scout cookies to a couple of the kids that I help out with. And, you know, I wasn't really thinking much of it because I'm not a parent, but I let them eat them in my car uh, <laughs> as we were going in to do something. And I was watching them. And Rookie it, move. And, well, that's the thing. I was wa- they're older. I was watching them. They didn't seem to be making a mess. And then I got back there the other day and it was just crumbs everywhere. And mind you, this is after... I noticed there were some crumbs, and I handed each them uh, each of them a wet wipe and said, "Okay, clean up your mess." <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Well, we kids are, don't know how to clean. We're fully grown adults, and I had to vacuum in here after it, <laughs> even after Rango. Oh wow, which is shocking because he is a good little crummer. I saw a funny meme today. Somebody said that they the two cute little dogs and a picture of them standing in the kitchen waiting expectantly. I guess they've trained them to say housekeeping <laughs> whenever they drop something on the floor <laughs> in the kitchen. The two dogs come running. So that's adorable. <laughs> maybe we could train your Chihuahua Rango. Yeah, you know I'm actually to do the same thing. <laughs> I'm actually trying to train him to do something new. Yeah, the bell. Yeah. Okay. So. Usually he can go all night without having to pee, but lately he hasn't been able to. And the thing is, he's really good about signaling that he has to go potty, but it's really quiet. Usually he'll just sort of stand by the door and look at me and then I'll see him be like, all right, here I come. Or he'll do like a little whine. But if I'm sleeping in my room, in my bed with my headphones on, I am not hearing a thing. Right. (laughs) You know? Well, you've got this wonderful little, I don't know. $15 $15 on Amazon. Oh, yeah. It's like an eye mask with headphones in it. Yeah. Am I describing It's sleep that? headphones, basically. It's really cool. Yeah. It's sort of like those wide fabric sports headbands, but it's got like a little control panel on your... Fo- I have it here if you want me to grab it. You put it on and it... No, nah, it's all right. But <laughs> I'm sure people can Amazon yeah. it or whatever, but right. you put it on and you're zonked. Oh, it's the best. Well, especially because I, I have like lots of... Uh, 
like fall asleep YouTube videos that I listen to that are so zen. And you can pull it down over your eyes too. So I'm someone who is afraid of the dark, even though I'm a full grown adult. And it's nice to have something where if I need the darkness, I can pull it over my eyes, but I can also whip it up and like look oh. around for little ghost girls or something like that. I get that, that right. Yeah. yeah or yeah. what's that one? I've never gotten it, but I've heard of it. That sleep paralysis oh, you can get where there's like the a sleep paralysis demon. shadowy figure uh-huh. looming over you. Never <laughs> happened to me, but so, I, can, I can see that. I've never had anything quite like that, but I had one experience exactly once that freaked me out so bad. It was so scary. I So it was definitely a sleep paralysis thing going on, and it sounded like a man's voice and footsteps that went from my bedroom door to my side of the bed right in front of me. And it did it really quick, like zoom. And it was like, <laughs> I think that's an interdimensional being. Oh, it was so scary. And like, that's the thing. I, I knew I was in sleep paralysis because I knew I was awake but couldn't move my body. And I was like, oh no, this is the sleep paralysis thing that they talk about. And uh, I was able to start moving and stuff. I, I had to just really focus and I was able to move. And I was like, okay, that was so scary. I saw I saw. <laughs> but- at least I know it's fake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw a tweet from a dad with a four-year-old who was like, hey, can can we turn on my nightlight? Because I'm afraid of monsters coming for me. And he said, and give away your position? Don't be silly. <laughs> what a terrible thing to teach a four-year-old kid. <laughs> yeah, not, honey, there are no monsters, but we'll turn on your light anyway. The, there are definitely monsters and you want the light off so that you can't see them and they can't see you. Yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Is that parenting done right or horribly, horribly, horribly wrong? wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, have you noticed now that sunset is about 745? Oh, like, I know. It just seems like in a heartbeat. And I actually looked this up the other day. Do you know sunset? Okay, so there's the uh, summer solstice and the winter solstice. Mm-hmm. And summer solstice, longest day of the year around June 20th. Right. Uh, our sun can set as late as 9.15, mm-hmm. and in the winter su- uh, winter solstice, December 22nd or so, our sun sets as early as 4.55. Right, I know. That's like a four-hour swing mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. And if you take into account day length, daylight length, um, our days can vary in terms of daylight, sunlight, mm-hmm. by six hours. Wild. It's just a wild time Mm -hmm. and i i've never that's something i've never looked up before i knew days get shorter days get longer right sure but i didn't know by how much six hours in a 24-hour period is significant i mean that's a fourth of the day yeah we've got a lot of spring so in east idaho we have so precious few months of summer Mm -hmm. that we like to take advantage of them all so i think this show could be divided up easily into two parts what happened last week and what's coming up next week right or in the next couple of weeks, because we have a ton of events in the spring, summer, and sometimes even fall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so now that spring has mostly sprung, mm-hmm. we might get some nasty weather in between now and, oh, right. for sure now and Memorial Day, but maybe even between now and Easter, I don't know. Yeah. Um, let's see, the three Idaho Falls Championship golf courses are open. Finally, right? The ping pong tables. Which also, I've never played golf in my life, and we should probably do that at one point. I have... Once or twice, it's certainly not my thing. Right, right. And I know there's lots of business networking opportunities. I don't care. I just don't. I don't blame you. It seems... Actually, okay, that's not totally true. I might pick it up someday, (laughs) but today is not that (laughs) Right. Although those little golf carts seem so fun. Yeah. Like, I'm down for that. If I could drive the cart and wear my You Hate This hat... My um. Oh yeah, your dad mowing the lawn hat. Yeah, yeah, I hate that hat. It's, it's wide brimmed. I bought it for a trip to Cancun to visit Cheats and Itza. <sighs> Which is the ugliest hat, though. <laughs> like, oh wait, well, okay. Or I could wear that um, Jurassic Park one we got at Universal Studios. That one last is actually this. slightly better. It's like a I don't know if it's Tommy Bahama or Bahama Mama. I actually or some think sort it is of... like a Tommy Bahama or something like that. It's some knockoff. Yeah, it's some knockoff of it actually. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, kind of funny. Right. It's like Island Joe. <laughs> Golf courses are open. And did you know they have outdoor ping pong tables across from the rec center on Memorial? Yeah, I actually have seen those before. You can bring your own balls. Uh, and I guess your own paddles, too. Uh-huh. Who doesn't like some balls and paddles, you know? Mm, fun. <laughs> Typical Saturday night. Yeah, right? 
or rent them from the rec center. Hey, is that number three? Across the... Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's there's the third one. We, <laughs> yeah. We waited a little too long for it, but... Yeah, it's all right. It's, uh, That's what keeps it fun and unexpected. Set and Like, meet. you know, paddles on balls. <laughs> and maybe even exceed expectations for this show. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, by the way, the rec center gym floor is coming right along. The recreation office is open. Yeah, Monday that's through probably Friday, why they're not going to have five. the Retro X at the re- at the rec center this year, right? Probably. Yeah. And we'll get to that in a minute, mm-hmm. or, or we could mention it right now. The Retro Retro X Two mm-hmm. stands for Retro Expo is happening at the Elks Lodge this year. Yeah, which I'm excited for because I actually, I really like the Elks Lodge. I think it's a fun little venue. Yeah, yeah. Festival yeah. of Trees. I think last yeah. time we were there. Mm-hmm. Plus, I don't know if you remember that one time we went just on a whim yeah. <laughs> on the weekend and someone sponsored us and we had a great time. We sat at the bar uh-huh. and ordered a drink. This was a couple of years ago, it wasn't was. it? It was. Yeah, it was back when I was living in my uh, crummy apartment on Yeah, Garfield. nearby. <laughs> and we walked there. Yeah. And uh, I said, let's just go in. You got to be a member, but I don't know. Yeah. So we were sitting there talking and ordered a drink. I, I, if, I'm afraid if we say this, other people are going to do it too. <laughs> It was just a magical night. It was really fun. Anyway, the the gal uh, there said, okay, and can I see your membership card? Well, we had already struck up a conversation with the guy sitting next to me. Right. And I said, well, we were just here on a whim, you know, thought we'd try it out. And as I understand it, your members can sponsor people in. Is that true? And she said, yeah, that's true. I looked at the guy we had been talking to and he's like, (laughs) I'll sponsor him. (laughs) Yeah, which is pretty cool, honestly. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I know a few people that love going to the Elks Lodge. Mm-hmm. And I think the appeal is cheap drinks. Right. And yeah. nice atmosphere. You know, nice yeah. folks. Nice, you know, chill, not too crazy. You've got a couple pool tables and stuff. Yeah, it, I thought it was really fun. And, um, you know, I will say, so the one thing is that if you have someone sponsor you, Choose wisely. Now we lucked out, and the guy who sponsored who sponsored us was super cool and nice, and I actually really enjoyed talking to him. But the entire time, I was thinking, "Man, thank goodness he's cool." Because if we would have gotten like some weirdo, this would be such an awkward night. I will say, yeah, the price we paid was he talked our ear off nonstop that night. Well, I mean, we talked each other's ears off. I would say, okay, but yeah. So, anywho. The gym floor is coming right along. The gym, weight room, and racquetball court are currently closed at the Idaho Falls Rec Center. Mm-hmm. But hey, new gym. Soon. Pretty cool. Yeah. And I was just thinking that same thought. I was at the corner of 17th and Woodruff the other day. Uh-huh. And I thought, oh, it's so nice to breeze through this intersection. And right. I remembered for six months, was mm-hmm. it nine months, that intersection was under construction. Oh, so long. <laughs> Such a pain, a pain in the ass. Or mm-hmm. PETA. <laughs> as, as we acronym that. and But it was just, I, I really enjoyed it as I flowed through that intersection. Mm-hmm. Felt good, man. Yeah, definitely. One other spring is sprung note. The IFFD has offered a list of things not to throw away. Oh, really? When you're spring cleaning. Okay. Because they don't want you to start a fire. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fair. Household mm-hmm. chemicals. You've heard of like mm-hmm. paint thinners and other stuff like Catching fire with the right chemical reaction? Oh, yeah, yeah. If you throw them, throw your rags in a pile in the garage? Yes. Matter of fact, there's a Bob's Burgers episode about that. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you remember that one. I vaguely remember. Yeah, but basically he just has all of his grease rags in a pile and someone leaves the drawer open or something and by being exposed to air for long enough, they just catch fire. Yeah. You know, a spontaneous combustion. Yeah. It's totally it, a thing. It can happen. Yeah. Ashes and coals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Should go without saying, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, lithium ion batteries. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, that's kind those, of a basic one. I'm sure we've seen the TikTok by now, right? Where the guy, I don't know, puts it on the sidewalk, pokes it with an ice pick, st- backs away, and it just shoots this hot, bright, white flame out of the Whoa. battery. Oh, okay, crazy. Once, once they're exposed to air or whatever, uh-huh. I'm not sure what the chemical reaction is. Right, right. Well, and there's even a joke in a Rick and Morty episode about that, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and okay. Can we talk about the fact that it is so much more difficult to, you know, dispose of batteries correctly? Like, to the point where it's such a pain in the butt that it's it's sort of prohibitive to people doing it right. You know who takes your old batteries, I think still, uh-huh. is Batteries Plus right next to the UPS store right. on Channing in Idaho Falls? Mm-hmm. I have heard of that, yeah. I think they're still there. I was just Hopefully. there today. 
mailing the package to Kevin. Right, right. Didn't think to look, but yeah, right behind Dixie's Diner. Nice. I think they'll take your old batteries. Okay, that's fair. So make a pile and have your teenage kid take them or whoever. Yeah, there you go. Do it yourself. You know, though, they really ought to have like some sort of neighborhood battery disposal site, though, where it's like a container at the end of the block. You walk down, you put your batteries in it, and then like once a month, they take it to a proper site. Do you know Japan actually has a special weekly electronics garbage collection? Really? Yeah, I don't That's know what they That's actually super cool and smart, do differently. too. Yeah. Because so many of the components of that can be reused for other things. Mm-hmm. You know, I always feel so bad throwing away electronics that don't work, even things that are like really minor. Like I went to the Dollar Tree and bought an LED uh, waterproof puck that I thought would be really fun in a bath uh, and it didn't work. (laughs) I was so sad. I got it to work once for like a second and then it wouldn't turn on again. Well, like those damn um, Bluetooth underwater headphones. Yes. You tried them out in the pool at the Apple the Uh other day and I threw mine away last summer because I tried them out once. And then they never worked properly again. The volume was super low. Right. Yeah. The volume's been, well, the volume on one side was really low. I think it'll work again. I just want to dry them out. But also like, yeah, what's the point of calling them waterproof if they're not really waterproof? Right. Well, and I mean, that's as why. As soon as I hit the water, they were done. You know, I get upset at cheap Chinese crap from mm-hmm. non-reputable brand names that don't even make sense phonetically, no matter your language. Right. On Amazon, because what do you do? You you buy two of them. They're thirteen bucks a piece. You're in it for twenty six bucks. Mm-hmm. They work for the first half of your first use, mm-hmm. and then don't. Right. What do you do? Do you really return them? Mm-hmm. I don't. I just write it off. But that's why it's so. I get so like. I get my dander up, <laughs> as my grandma used to say. Right. Over these kind of things because. Um, you learn a lesson, but mm-hmm. then what's what is the lesson? Well, trust a reputable brand next time. Well, right. if Amazon is flooded with non-reputable brands, then what do you do? Yeah. So I bet in the next year or two, Amazon's going to do something about that. Probably. Yeah, get rid of some of the drop shippers or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, speaking of that headphone experience though, can I talk a little bit about pool etiquette since we are finally getting back into swim season? Yes. Okay. So I love swimming as a form of working out. It's my favorite way to do it. It's just so much more peaceful. It's what I do. Now, I like to go to Apple because it's awesome and they've got big pools that are indoor and they're open at the times that I need them to be. Um, Plus my day job pays for it, which is super hot. Um, But the other day- Nice (laughs) perk. You're right. So the other day, I got in the pool and there were these ladies who had just gotten out of their little swim class in the big Olympic size pool. If you've been there, there's like a smaller, warmer pool and then a bigger Olympic size pool right next to it, both indoors. Okay. So they got out of the Olympic one, went into the smaller, warmer one, and we're just like standing in a circle, soaking and talking, which is cool and fine. But they were all the way at the deep end where people would actually want to swim. I clearly want to do a couple of laps in the warmer pool because it's better for like your muscles and stuff. And also I can't hold my breath very long. So it's easier (laughs) to do shorter laps for me. Um, So I start doing that and they see what I, they see what I'm doing and they move over a little, which was very cool and courteous of them. And I really appreciated it. And when I tried to use the headphones at first, I just took them off and tossed them. And I was like, whatever, I'm not dealing with this. Did a few more laps. And then I was like, well, yeah, but I really want to see if they'll work. So I got out for a second. I went to grab my phone. I put my headphones back in. I was getting right back in the pool. And then right then some other chick on the opposite side of the pool gets in and is walking over to my area right as I start dipping a toe in and she gets there. She and I get there basically at the same time. And I'm like, whatever, I'm just going to go to the other pool. Because she's clearly like walking with weights and doing something that she can't do in that pool, but I can. Sure. Like I can do what I'm doing. So I'm like, okay. you know, and she's like, oh, I can go. And I'm like, no, it's fine. I'm just swimming. You need this one. I'll move. So she did recognize that she was about to take your place. Exactly. Ah. Yes. So I did appreciate that. And I thought that was fine. I was a little annoyed, sure, because I like the smaller pool, but that's a preference thing. And she can't do what she we, wants to we do. We try but I to can. be civil. Exactly. So I go to the other pool. There's only one other person in it. And if you've ever been there, you'll know that it's a three-lane Olympic-sized pool. The gal's already in there. I take the other lane. And then about halfway through, another gal comes and takes the third lane. Well, as I'm about to finish my workout, I uh, swim back to the other side and I run into some random guy who's now in my lane, which he shouldn't be there already. Uh. And I even think I, I pop out of the water 
And I, so I didn't quite run into him, but I almost did. But I look up and there's someone there. And I'm like, oh, geez. A little and startling. Like, I was startled. <laughs> yeah. And I think I very clearly out loud said, oh, geez. And I kind of looked at him and jumped and he was like, he didn't acknowledge me or anything and whatever. And I was like, okay, let's see here. There's three people in here in a three lane pool. What you going to do, buddy? <laughs> Pick a lane. Literally stay in your lane. That's the thing. There were no more lanes to be had. He yeah. was the fourth. Oh, okay. So there were three women, me included, already in the pool. Here comes this old ass guy. Now, how old? He had to have been at least 60. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because I, I know from experience that once you hit 50, you just have fewer f- to give. I get it. And also, <laughs> there's a difference between having f- and you know maintaining normal but not, social etiquette you, right Th- you know? that's and i don't mean that as a free pass to anybody over the age of 50 to not be courteous and considerate right of others i don't know i kind of get it right it's like i don't feel i'm this way but i do have a few friends my age who just aren't observant it's not that they're inconsiderate right they're just completely oblivious of other people around them and the one person mm-hmm. I'm thinking of has been since he was 18. Right. Now I'm going to make which the is argument. When I met him. I'm going to make the argument with this guy that he knew damn well what he was doing and here's how I know that. So I think He was to trying my, to pull a sneaky. <laughs> so here's the thing. I think to myself, what the hell is this guy going to do? Let's see. Let's find out. <laughs> he gets right between me and the gal right next to me in the other lane. He's basically riding the line of the lanes. Okay, he's lane splitting. Exactly. If he were a motorcycle, that'd be illegal in Idaho. Did you know that? Right, people. Idaho and motorcycles? Start yeah. seeing motorcycles. Well, it's tough when you're lane splitting. Yes, Just exactly. Saying. But anyway, so he gets There's right between <laughs> He gets right between me and her and he starts swimming and I keep running into him because there's not enough room for him to take that spot. And I'm already annoyed because my first spot was already taken by someone, but that was fine. I I was willing to give that spot up. This one, I wasn't willing to give up, and I was really mad about it because I was there first. I was mid-workout. He was clearly retired. It didn't have a job. He had nowhere to go. He could have gone any time of the day. This was the only time of the day I could go, right? Right, and he probably wakes up at 5 a.m. every day. (laughs) Right, and I get that. Because when you get older, you require less sleep. Yeah, and I get that, and that's fine. But also, dude, wait a minute. Just wait. Watch TV for a while. Anyway, he gets in my way. I keep bumping into him. I finally just am sick of it. And I finish my lap. It's about time for me to finish my workout there anyway. I get out of the pool and I just look at him. And I I see him sort of do this double take like a... Because he notices I'm looking at him. And as soon as he looks at me... You want to know what I did? What'd you do? I scoffed. (laughs) Ah. Shook my head and walked away. I wanted him to know my disapproval. And honestly, I feel very in the right for it. Usually I'd feel a little guilty for that, but no, he needs to know that that was a rude thing he did and he should feel bad. Yeah, he did a bad thing and he should feel bad. And I would have, I would have given anything to be there just to hear that scoff. I Mm -hmm. bet it was a top quality 100 scoff. Oh, I was pissed. I'm sorry that happened to you. (sighs) Me too. I kind of had a day like that this week where... Like nothing was going my way and every um, solution had its own problem. (laughs) I actually think I remember that day. And people were getting in my way and it was my way and they were in it. (laughs) That's actually, that's usually my joke. (laughs) I made that today while I was grocery shopping. Somebody Uh said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in your way. I said, it's not my way, it's your way. And I'm in it. (laughs) I just, it's a- Oh, that's nice. There's, I think we forget that there's, um, there is such a thing as civil conduct in public. Right. And what that means is you, even if you don't feel like it, be nice to the other person. Be considerate. That's the golden rule that we've been harping on in the first six months of our show. Okay, but he didn't deserve it. <laughs> no, I know. I know. He was just ignorant. Well, and, and realistically, if I would have pulled the same stunt he did... And someone treated me the way that I treated him. I would have been like, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> like right. the other day I accidentally cut off a one J driver. Oof. And they, oh. <laughs> they honked at me and flipped me off. First of all, payback's a bitch, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind. You know what you did. <laughs> right. But they honked at me Slightly and flipped kidding. me off. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I deserve it. Sorry. Yeah. My bad. I didn't right. mean to. I thought my car was going <laughs> to giddy up a little bit more and it didn't. <laughs> 
That's on me. <laughs> it did not giddy. But you know you did bad if a 1J driver <laughs> is the one flipping you off. I think now might be a perfect time to introduce this. <laughs> this here is a little Jesus. Mm-hmm. It's a You want a little Jesus in your life? <laughs> This is it right here. That's a good amount of Jesus. Somebody in Idaho Falls. Here's a little heads up for you to keep your eyes open for this. Uh huh. And you can go to Facebook or Instagram. I think those are the platforms. Yes. Search I think for, the Instagram is actually pretty new too. Search for a little Jesus. Mm-hmm. You get the pun the, there? I think the Instagram is a little Jesus official. This little miniature plastic Jesus is as big as say. The, the tip of your thumb. The tip of my thumb. Mm-hmm. He's basically Thumbelina. Yeah. <laughs> I saw on their page that this was a ministry. Ah, ministry. That's funny. But they've been placing these mini Jesuses, these uh, little Jesus all over town. Uh-huh. And some of them have a yellow sash like this or blue or purple, I think. Or red. Or red. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, think it's, I think it's kind of cute. It's super cute. Like they do, by, like it's a sincere thing. It's not a parody or anything. Right, yeah. Yeah, uh, by the sound of the page, it sounds like he just wants to spread a little bit of Jesus's love for those who are seeking it. So yeah, yeah, I think that's I think it's a nice message for those who need it. Yeah, I think one I saw was like on a gas pump, and it said "Get pumped up for Jesus," and one was next to some sanitizing wipes, <laughs> and it sa- and the hashtag was "Sanitize your soul" or something. But yeah, cute. I think it's a really cute, clever idea. Mm-hmm. We may have an idea who's doing this, but we're not going to out them. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we're going to leave it up to you folks to figure that out. That's more fun. And I guess their Facebook page is actually encouraging you. I think you can get like a hundred of them for 25 bucks or something, something like, like that. that. They're really cheap on Amazon. Just look up tiny Jesus figurine and it'll pop right up. Not that the world needs more plastic pollution or anything, but, well, but they already exist. You know, they, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a cute idea, mm-hmm. especially considering that it's almost Easter. Yeah, right, right. So whoever you are, you sneaky guy or gal, <laughs> it's cute. Yeah. We approve. You know, I did something kind of like that in <laughs> high school. Oh, yeah? Yeah. On like the last day of one of my years, I think it was my senior year, I actually left about 10 or 15 plastic dinosaurs hidden around my school. Whoa. Yeah. And like a couple of people later on were like, oh, I found a dinosaur. And I was like, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, felt, <laughs> I felt like a, <laughs> I should have been like twirling a mustache, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like snidely whiplash. Yes. Yeah. What's the, you, you wear a bow on your head. I can't pay the rent. And then put it on your neck. You must pay the rent. (laughs) I can't pay the rent. You must pay the rent. And then put it under your nose like a mustache. I'll pay the rent. (laughs) No? Okay. (laughs) Cute. (laughs) We went to Ghostbusters Frozen Empire Friday night. Mm -hmm. And on the way, we saw this. It's a bus, (sighs) school bus, Mm -hmm. labeled not a thrift store. And I tried to get some decent video. Can you see the line of, I don't know, teenagers? Well, yeah, mostly teens. I thought it up. was some kind of high school field trip or something. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what it was. But like also, I okay, when I found out what it was later, I was like, why is it all teens? So I, I did a little investigative journalism uh-huh. on my own. Come to find out, Not a Thrift Store is a Utah-based enterprise. Mm-hmm. It's basically a thrift store in a bus. Crazy. And it's powered mostly by social media, I think, TikTok and Instagram. Well, and the TikTok thing is what explained the teenagers to me. Yeah. Yeah. But they actually have more followers on Instagram, which is, I think it's that's the reverse of how it usually is. Right, it's right. It's usually pretty darn easy to get followers on TikTok mm-hmm. as opposed to Insta. But, um, okay, so check this out. This is from their Instagram story. And they explain that they're heading to Idaho Falls. Mm-hmm. Which is one of a few stops in Idaho. They announce, okay, we're doing an Idaho tour. They give the towns and the dates in their bio. Mm-hmm. And, you know, here's what they share. And that you see the line, too, from their perspective. And you see a guy who got a great deal on Jinko jeans. Which also, my mom, when Jinko jeans were big, had just a ton of them. And she kept them, too. Which would have been, as we've explained before, about 25 years ago. Yeah. Right. And 20, 98 was huge for Jinkos. Dude, she was obsessed. 99. She thought they were, the, and honestly, she could pull them off. They looked really cool on her. Yeah. But yeah, uh, tons of Jinko jeans. And it's weird to see them coming back. I bought Jinko jeans once, I think, in 99 when they were just huge. And I realized I couldn't. Can you imagine? <laughs> 
Can you imagine me in those? I can't. It's so bad. I realized that, okay, I learned in economics about um, uh, complementary goods. Right. For example, and this is, this is the exact example my teacher used. Uh, beer and pretzels are complementary uh-huh. goods. Right, right. Meaning typically you buy one. You see one the sales sort of. With the other. Yeah. Yeah, yeah skyrocket yeah, simultaneously. Yeah. And with Jinko jeans, I realized, oh, I have no shoes that I can wear with these jeans unless I want them dragging on the ground. Right. So I had to pair buy a pair of Doc Martin boots. Oh, funny. Two. With a, you know, giant sole. Yeah, yeah, with a nice heel to it. Yeah. I still have those boots, by the way. Right, and they actually look really good on you, by the way. They're they're my winter boots, thank yeah, you. Yeah, they look really, they look good. <laughs> they're I like, my snow-blowing like, boots. <laughs> I like a good pair of ducks. But uh, anyway, um, what an idea. <laughs> Not quite sure what to make of it, but the kids love it. Right, yeah. A yeah, it's roaming funny. thrift shop. You know, I would think another complimentary good to Jinko jeans would be a wallet chain. Yeah, yeah, those were big. <laughs> Probably because, like, you know, you can't feel your wallet in your back pocket anymore because your pocket is now like three inches away from your ass and also like two inches down. You know, so I'm trying to think of like who was big turn of the century. Uh, Smash Mouth, uh huh. Um, Sugar Ray, In Sync was huge. In Sync for sure. Mm-hmm. What about seashell necklaces? Weren't oh, those yeah, big the in the '90s? Shells? Oh yeah. hell yeah, they were. What about a white long sleeve t-shirt with a regular shirt over it? Oh yeah, that was a big one. That was yeah. huge. Or Maybe like they those just uh, have... lace camis. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh huh. Maybe they just have um, good stuff and yeah. they show it off on Insta or TikTok, and mm-hmm. that's what gets the kids out. Yeah, makes sense. You know, though, I was. <laughs> So I showed up to the movie like right before it started. Yeah. I think I showed up as it started and I had to try to drive my car through this <laughs> scattering of teenagers. Yeah. And I was so angry about A it. Sea of teenagers. Especially because, okay, most of them saw what was going on and had some awareness of what was going on and moved for my car so I could get through the parking lot that they were standing in, the car area that they were using their human bodies in. I was so mad. <laughs> But there was this one guy who stood there talking to his friend who was just far enough in that I couldn't get past him without freaking him out. Was it being, was he being ignorant? He was being ignorant. Yeah. And I finally went to roll down my window and that's when he finally looked at me and then scooted in a little. And it's like, gee, thanks, dude. Yeah. Couldn't have done that sooner. But I was just emotionally drained and angry before I got there. So I was just, I had no sympathy or patience for anyone. And I feel a little bad about about it, but also... Pay attention. I think, yeah. <laughs> I'm just having a bad week. And I'm sorry about that. Mm. I think the, the lesson is, you know, be kind to everyone. You have no idea what kind of fight they're fighting. Right. Yeah. Right. But also, if you had time to stand in a thrift store line, then his fight couldn't have been too bad that day. <laughs> right. No, I mean him to you. Yeah, right. I <laughs> no, at. I know. One other cool thing I thought was pretty cool that happened last week. There was a... A game, NCAA, that's basketball, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sports ball of some kind. Yeah. Yeah, the Uh, big orange one. There was a game in Spokane, Washington, one of the three capitals of Idaho. There's the state of Idaho, the L on my (laughs) forehead, Boise, Spokane, Salt Lake City. Right. Spokane, Washington. Mm -hmm. Yale played Auburn, and the Yale marching band couldn't make it. For whatever reason. Which, what a bummer, dude. So guess Maybe who's... they had too many like kids going off on yacht parties or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Had the vacation in the hamp. It was their yeah. spring break. Too many of them were heading over to Martha's Vineyard, you yes. know? Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that was it. Yeah. So guess who stepped up? Who? U of I. Hell yeah. Now, we don't usually talk about U of I because that's Northern Idaho. Mm-hmm. Moscow. Yeah, although we do have a branch here in Idaho Falls. We do. Uh, they're actually in the the Idaho Falls campus of uh, ISU. Yeah. So the University of Idaho Marching Band stepped in, stepped up, learned the Yale fight song, played it during the game, and helped Yale win over <laughs> Auburn. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Good for them. And I didn't realize until reading this story that Yale had the blue Y as their sports ball logo, oh, too. Oh, well, yeah. So they shamelessly copied BYU? <laughs> Which also, realistically... I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. I'm. You might not know I'm kidding. I just want to say for the record, I'm kidding. Honestly, I never really understood the BYU logo being the Y. Why isn't like, it B? 
Right. Yeah, have it be the B or have it be BYU. Yeah. But like just the Y seems weird to me because no one calls it Young University. Right. You know? Right. It's just, it's it's a bad logo and it should feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on. I uh, I will say I do prefer the BYU logo. The one right. with the Y with a circle around it. And I know that Yale came first. I know, of course I know that. And uh, U of I marching band, that is why you are IFAF this week. Chris Pie 5, 21 finger gun pew, salute, pew. and chef's kiss. To you. To you. What a thoughtful thing to do for an Ivy League college that should have been there in the first place. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of surprised. Like, but, all these kids are such high achievers, they get into Yale, but they can't be there to perform? Like, know, Daddy's taking me to the Keys this weekend, so mm. I can't play. I mean, honestly, I don't blame him for not wanting to come over to Spokane. So, <laughs> eh, there are Spokane's worse places fine. you can be. Yeah, not a fan of Spokane. <laughs> been through a couple times. It's fine. Maybe it's changed since I've been through. Right, right. It's a few years ago, it was a minute ago. Mm -hmm. So that concludes the what happened last week part of the shoe. <laughs> and now let's get on to the what's going on this week, this upcoming weekend, and weekends beyond. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's Easter. Jesus oh, yeah. is the reason for the season. <laughs> if you need a little Jesus, again, Facebook and Instagram. You want... Isn't that usually what they say for Christmas? <laughs> I, but I, it's mean, also... I guess, yeah. yeah. Well, to be fair, I mean, they did sort of Christianize all the holidays. So really, it's the reason for all the seasons. Right, yeah. When the yeah. Council of Nicaea got together, they're like, how about all these pagan holidays? We, If, if you can't beat them, join them, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah, you which know, honestly, just... like the pagans know how to party, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they couldn't All beat the them. All the pagans know how to party. What a great segue! <laughs> We're just the masters of the inappropriate segue. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, but yeah, it's also time. There's Advent, yeah, and then Lent, and then mm -hmm. all right, uh, Easter's coming up this Sunday. Which means get your honey baked ham now. Right. Oh my gosh, I bet that's gonna be huge for them. We're that's what we're thinking of, honestly. Yeah, yeah. We were kind of considering it, it, taking it to my grandma's house for Easter. Yeah. Although I should really check with her and see what her main dish is gonna be, because I don't wanna like show her up. Well, and they have <laughs> and they have lots of side dishes too. Right, right. That's that you true. Can get. And you know, uh, there's really like if you want a ham sandwich, you can go to honey baked ham and eat it right there. Right. But pretty much everything else requires some time in the oven. A little bit, yeah. But they have some great mm -hmm. side dishes that you throw in and they take 45 minutes and <coughs> just great. Yeah. You know, though, what I really want to make this year, <laughs> I saw these, um, I saw this like recipe for deviled eggs, mm -hmm. but instead of cutting them in half and, you know, squirting the yolk in the middle, like you usually would, instead what you do <laughs> is you cut it halfway. So if this is the egg and this is the top and that's the bottom, you cut it halfway down there and then cross, crisscross it and cut it halfway down again. And then you sort of put the dollop of yolk in the middle. And then you also put a little sprig of onion on the bottom. So it looks like a tulip. Okay. Which I thought was I wasn't such tracking a good for idea. a second, but I think I got it. Yeah. yeah. I'll oh, find the cute. I'll find the picture and you can post it on the video if you want to. Okay. But like I'm so tempted to make like a bouquet of egg tulips. Cause honestly, it's First off, it's just an excuse to eat a whole egg instead of half an egg, which I love. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I also, love it deviled like eggs. Be cute, you know? So good. They're so good, man. Mayonnaise well, and egg yolk and dill and mustard. What's not to love? Right. Well, and you know, so we made those pickled eggs a while ago. Yeah. And what I really want to do is I want to make deviled pickled eggs. Hmm. Wouldn't that be good? I don't think so. Oh, I disagree. I think the uh, egg whites would be too rubbery and it might be too vinegary, but we could. I, I'm certainly willing mm -hmm. to try. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah, yeah. around and find out. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing, really. The yolks inside taste the same yeah. as they did before. So I feel like I feel like it's a nice way to sort of balance it out, you know? A little tart and tangy with some like creamy yolk part. It sounds good to me. So two things happening on Saturday. One at the waterfront, the great Easter egg hunt at Snake River Landing. Mm -hmm. Saturday, March 30th, starts at 930, but you want to check. And by the way, a lot of these things we'll be talking about will have links in this post, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Mm -hmm. uh, look for the main post, scroll down, take a look. We'll have links for these things. Right. Um, so that's more than 25,000 eggs, tons of prizes. They have different start times for different 
age categories. Right. And the best part is they're on different fields too. Yes. So you don't have to wait for them to like restock the field. Right. Yeah. Happening at the waterfront at mm-hmm. Snake River Landing. They even have a hunt for special needs kids sponsored by Camp Hayden. I think it's special needs folks. Special needs folks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sponsored yeah. by Camp Hayden. That's at 1125. More information on the Facebook page. Again, link and post. Sponsored by Teton Volkswagen, ICCU, Teton Toyota, and Rich Broadcasting. Yes. Yeah. We've been yeah. talking about that on the radio for a hot minute now. So. Yeah. Our buddy Don Jarrett. Mm-hmm. And of course, 96 1 and 102 1 The Wolf, Shaggy yes. mm-hmm. on the pick. I Star love Shaggy. He's yeah. so cool. He's K-I-D, such a nice Jolene guy. Thomas, Him things. and his wife, dude. They're just the coolest people. Then also downtown on Saturday mm-hmm. at noon, there's an Easter bunny, I don't know, scavenger hunt. Oh, cute. Yeah. Nice. Well, and if you're going to be in downtown anyway, you should totally check out Lily's Consignment over on A Street. My good friend Natalie runs that shop, and it is, it's is—it's pretty nice. Plug, plug, plug. Mm-hmm. They were IFAF a couple weeks ago. Right. Well, and she's gotten in a lot of really good stuff lately. I actually need to go hit her up pretty soon and see if she's got some stuff for me, too. There's, what, 27 bunnies hidden through downtown. Oh, cute. I love on that. On Saturday. Find one. Then you can meet the real Easter bunny at Civitan Plaza. That sounds fun. That does sound fun. That's super cute. I might have to take my niece and nephew to that. Then the following week, we there's so many events, we thought we'd throw them all in one show, basically. Right, right. No, We're not having any fun this show. <laughs> I guess Idaho Falls loves Easter, you know? <laughs> Just the facts. Well, yeah, we love it when the snow stops flying and we can go outside and do fun stuff. It's weird to see all these people coming out of hibernation. Yeah. You know, like all of a sudden the streets are just packed full of uh-huh. people. <laughs> Where'd you guys come from? Yeah. They've been indoors all winter. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just like us. Yeah. Probably not watching the Toxic Avenger. (laughs) Probably not. Probably not. (laughs) Maybe we'll celebrate Easter by watching Troll 2 this weekend. I I love that idea. (laughs) Let's see if we can find a musical version of that, too. (laughs) The following Friday. So next Friday, April 5th, 7 p.m. at the West Bank Event Center. Mm -hmm. It's the Chamber of Commerce celebrating 120 years... Wow. I know, right? With a uh, speakeasy soiree. Ooh la la. Or yeah. say less. <laughs> right up your alley, right? So into that. I love that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm totally there. <laughs> Step back in time to the extravagant era of the Roaring Twenties. Which also, we only have six more years to make this the Roaring Twenties again, and we're not doing it, and it's really pissing it's me not, off. It's not going so well. Like, why are Jinko jeans coming back <laughs> and not flapper dresses? First of all, fringe yeah. is fun. Well, you can you can wear your flapper dress to this yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Tickets are forty bucks. Link and post. You know, I keep putting off buying like a really proper flapper dress, and I think it's just time. I might as yeah. well just do it. You know. Maybe we should learn the Charleston. Oh, I already know the Charleston, but I'll teach you in the next week and a half or so. Yeah. I mean, I know the song. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. went straight to Chicago. <laughs> I, I know the, uh, I'm a huge fan of instrumentals. Uh-huh. And um, one of my favorites right now, since the advent of TikTok, there's been so many cheap ones by production companies right, that right. people use because they're royalty free. But mm-hmm. the big one in my mind is the one that played uh, during the, where Rick was slaughtering all the other Ricks in season five. <laughs> The last episode, uh-huh. the Citadel episode with Evil Morty, and, and it's by Blonde Redhead, and it's called Song. I love Blonde Redhead, by the way. Something something about Endless Coda, but yeah, it's a really, it's it's the one that goes, but I saw that in a TikTok today. Right. It's like, there's that song. It's all over the place. Mm-hmm. It totally is, dude. Okay. <laughs> then next Saturday- April 6th now is what we're on. Uh-huh. The spring kickoff event of the Idaho Falls Farmer's Market. <gasps> Which I'm so excited about because I love the Farmer's Market. <laughs> Here's the vendor list. Scroll that up. Over 50 vendors welcoming in spring. We love the Farmer's Market here. And by we, I mean Carly mostly. <laughs> but I do love how it's sort of artsy-fartsy. Yeah. Which is short for, not a lot of people know this, artisan-fartisan. <laughs> <laughs> but... um. <laughs> That'll be fun. Gives one more to tide us over until the farmer's market starts in May. You, Mike. <laughs> you be okay there, Punchy? That's <laughs> 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 Artisan, partisan, you f-
<laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs> that's it's just it's so stupid. It fits, though. And I love it. Okay, and then also April 6th, 6.30 p.m., Elks Lodge. It's the annual YMCA Gala Dance into the Future. Man, lots of future-themed events lately. Yeah. I kind of wonder if they're, like, collaborating together so people don't have to buy different outfits. Oh, maybe that's it. I mean, that would be smart, but also, like, I don't want to wear the same thing so close together, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a thing for people. Well, especially for women. Men don't have to worry about that. It's hey, a bunch of crap. Maybe I can wear that sparkly black jacket that I got for the Snake <laughs> River Furball Tales from Space fundraiser that didn't come like until a week later thanks amazon okay actually that's a great idea and <laughs> I our actually, podcast is available on amazon by the way and i actually got two dresses for the furball and only ended up wearing one so Boom, i baby. could wear the other one and it's majority black so yeah you want to go to this one too i, I have a feeling it's going to be fun you know i've heard that it's fun <laughs> to stay at the y m c a yeah, I'm down. Marina, Marina, Marina. Okay. Plus, I just love a gala. Did I say Lincoln Post? I think I've said that enough. I'll right. stop saying that. The Saturday after that, volunteers needed for the Idaho Falls Zoo's annual cleanup day. Yay! Now, I want Probably you to think. lots of poops. Think about how fun it is to clean up your own yard <laughs> if you're a pet owner <laughs> after the spring. Right, right. You know all those days where you didn't feel like going out and cleaning up after your pet. I sure do. <laughs> when it was, you know, 10, 20 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then you just have to make up for it in the spring. So that's a lot of fun. Now imagine doing that for animals two to three to 10 times the size. Or if you have a chihuahua, like 100 times the size. My stepdad had bull mastiffs. Oh, really? And they poop bigger than I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. And I think that's um something I don't want to do. Yeah. I wonder if they have a... I imagine there will be a lot of cleaning up poop. Yeah. There's got to be. Oh, you got to bring your own supplies. Look, this sounds like... This sounds, sounds like, like some, something for people who love animals. Right. Some really charitable, critter-loving folks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or love the zoo. Yeah. I do it for the zoo. Yeah. I do it <laughs> for the zoo. You know, and here's the thing, too. Kermy. <laughs> Rango. Second episode of the <laughs> And here's the thing. Ranko is a really small dog. And realistically, generally, he has really small poops. But every now and then, dude, he'll lay down a log. You know, like call a lumberjack for that thing. <laughs> you know? So I'm just saying, if these animals are anything like him, there's going to be some that are pretty dang big. Like some, after the end, you're like, you feel <laughs> like you should put on a rubber glove and apply a little desitin. <laughs> Because you know that created a, uh, not a hemorrhoid, what's it called? Anal fissure. Yeah, probably. Those are the worst. <laughs> Yikes. I have a personal story about those. It's not quite like Paul Rudd and this is 40. Okay. But close. I won't share it this time. Okay. I'm sure there's going to be a better time than the <laughs> Easter episode to talk yeah, about anal fissures. Yeah, we've talked a lot about a lot of gross stuff. Not anyway. fun. Yeah, let, let's get to something more Pleasant. Okay. <laughs> uh, Lincoln Post. Okay. Sorry, I was thinking about Rango laying down a log. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rango's Links and Post. <sighs> Lango's, Rango's Lincoln Logs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With, spring, <laughs> with spring here, summer's not so far behind, Memorial Day weekend coming mm -hmm. up. One of my favorite things, I go and just at least do a drive-by every year. The Field of Honor at mm -hmm. Freeman Park, that's where they put put up at least a hundred flags. Right. Maybe more. They put up quite a few. And so I shot a video one Memorial Day. You know how much I love the rain and you're kind of yeah. with me on that. Oh yeah. I'm I totally love. down. You know, here's the thing. I've been going to the park a little bit more often this last few, these last few days and Get I'm already getting a little color. Oh really? So I love the rain cause I'm too pale for the sun. Mm -hmm. But it was just beautiful. I shot, you know, these flags kind of waving in the gentle rain. Mm -hmm. Talk to the exchange club people who are super nice. If you want to honor our heroes, this is a powerful way to make them feel appreciated mm -hmm. and respected. Yeah, definitely. Oh, you can sponsor one of 1,000 flags. There we go. That sounds more accurate. Not 100. I was like, it's got to be more than 100. Yeah, 100 seems kind of piddly. <laughs> it's a cool site. Fieldofhonor.net. 
Lincoln Post. Also coming up, I know, it's a huge list. Yeah, well, I mean, everyone's coming out of hibernation. They want to go to events, so they're just throwing all the events at the wall to see what sticks, I guess. Spring Brew, April 27th. Oh, nice. Retro X, which we mentioned earlier, Uh huh. which is May 3rd, and May the 4th be with you. <laughs> oh. Uh, Freezing for a Reason fundraiser for the M and Pool, May 18th. Register by May 3rd to be guaranteed a swag bag and a t-shirt. So, whew, we did it all. Nice, nice. And we'll probably talk a little bit more about those as they get a little closer too. Right. Yeah. But just want to give you a heads up. So there it is. Mm -hmm. There is your not so brief digest. Yeah. To your entire that... social calendar for the next few weekends has been filled. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. If you're looking for stuff to do. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to talk about Kate Middleton? Where the hell is she? What's really going on? Or do we want to talk about Quiet on Set? It's Ooh. on Max. That's the uh, it's the a Nickelodeon four one. part yeah special about if you watch Nickelodeon mm -hmm. in the late nineties, early two thousands, mm -hmm. you know these shows. All that right? Um, geez, Zoe one hundred and one, the Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, Drake and I Josh, Carly. yeah. And a pretty big bomb, mm -hmm. Drake Bell mentioned that he was. So, okay, the, the main takeaway is Dan Schneider. Now, look, I know Dan Schneider from, did you ever see Better Off Dead? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The most underrated 80s movie of all time. Okay, wait, I need to clarify. No, I haven't seen it, but I know what you're talking about. But you've about. heard of it. Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. It's got uh, J John Cusack mm -hmm. in it. And Dan Schneider played the annoying neighbor guy i mean really disgusting neighbor guy mm -hmm. who hosted a french foreign exchange student that john cusack sort of fell in love with and wanted to impress and dan schneider's character tried to prevent him from getting anywhere near right. his girlfriend that was staying in his house that's all i knew Yikes. dan schneider from yeah apparently had a heck of a career after that yeah mm -hmm. and started producing shows and stuff come to find out kind of an asshole yeah to work yeah for. there were lots of there were lots of allegations for a long time, and it won't surprise me when some of those are proven to be true. Okay, and to make matters worse, they hired a couple of pedos, one right. of whom molested Drake Bell. Yeah. And, boy, that explains a lot, doesn't it? It does. It doesn't excuse anything, no. but it does explain a lot. I want to know, where were the parents? Apparently, they were on set. Well, that's the thing, though. Where you were don't, all like... the other cast members, all the other crew members, Yeah. all the other producers? Yeah. That's the thing. It's really hard to be a caring Hollywood parent because realistically, like even just setting your kid up to do one of those shows has certain requirements of them that no kid should really have to have on their shoulders. And so it's sort of inherently not a great thing. And I guess I would have loved to hear from Amanda Bynes on this whole thing, mm -hmm. but she, I don't know if she's under a conservative ship, a conservative ship. Like Britney Spears, but, and I think she was, I don't know, arrested last spring for mm -hmm. something or other. And you remember her Twitter meltdown where she was kind of posting mostly nude photos of herself. Right, right. Um, I remember talking about that when that happened mm -hmm. and just going, because uh, it's so sad when you right. see a child star implode. It's so sad mm -hmm. when you, you know, I was shocked when Behind the Music first started airing. Remember that show? Because oh, don't. it's it's the typical every episode was the typical tale, memorably the TLC episode, but the typical tale of, you know, artists, music artists or um, actors mm -hmm. just getting wrecked by the industry. Right, right. But the other the other half of the show was like, oh, that's terrible. My well, takeaways were don't ever let your kid go into show business, and they need to start having, you know, child advocates. Mm -hmm. As part of the crew. Yeah. Like Nick was trying to save money. And so like like Dan Schneider screwed over a couple of writers in the process. Ah, just heartbreaking Yeah, to hear and realize. Yeah. Well, and the biggest thing, too, is like all of these people, all of the child actors were under 18, obviously, because they're child actors. So there's no way that they could really give true informed consent. <laughs> you know, they could give some, sure. But realistically, like... As a kid, you don't understand the repercussions of taking on a task like this. You really don't. You know? 
And like And and you'll you'll cave yeah. to pressure easily, I think. Yeah. And I okay, and I think ooh, I I'm gonna feel really dumb if I get this wrong. I think her name is Jenna McCurdy. Yes, the yes. the gal who wrote the book. Yeah, I'm glad my mom died. She played Sam in iCarly. Mm-hmm. They t- um, they did touch on iCarly a little bit too. Yeah, and I think that the way that she sort of talked about it was very thoughtful and and thought provoking. You know, and she talked about things like how um, iCarly stole her first kiss because she, for one of her scenes, had to kiss her coworker, um, the boy who played. Don't remember his name now. The boy character on iCarly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, the one that no one cared about. Was, that, yeah. Well, and that's the thing, <laughs> kidding, you know. I mean, it was a little past my time. I was right, kind of right. It was a little past my time too. Yeah, yeah. Like I was already over Nickelodeon when that came out. Mm. But but anyway, um, but yeah, I just remember like, you know, uh, she was kind of talking about it in an interview, and she was saying how like she'd never kissed anyone before. That was her first kiss, and she had basically asked if there was any way that she could do a stage kiss or something like that. And they were like, nope, sorry. And it it just, it sucks how much autonomy was stolen from her as a child. It's horrible what happened. It's heartbreaking. I even cried a couple of times just going, oh, like I had to, I had to stop after episode two Mm -hmm. and I waited a couple of hours between uh, that and three and four. Uh, because it was just a lot to take emotionally. Right. You know, that's hard for me to see somebody else going through a hard time. Yeah, yeah. And You're a sweet, sensitive boy. Well, I, uh, I, know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think we've said before, I think I'm so empathic that I shut that part of my brain off. Right. I get And that. just go, nope, can't feel those feelings. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I haven't been to therapy much lately. So <laughs> uh, maybe I'll dive into that when I'm like, maybe like 70. <laughs> Not about me. Anyway, certainly worth the watch, especially mm-hmm. if you were a fan of those shows, but it might take away some of the good feelings you have about those shows. Right. I really do want to watch it, actually. I've been meaning to for a while. We'd love to hear mm-hmm. what you have to say. Tell us your thoughts and feelings and opinions. But, you know, I think the biggest part is we need, like you were saying, we need advocates on set. We need stricter labor laws, that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, you remember the, the uh, Upton Sinclair muck, <clears throat> muckraking thing, mm-hmm. you know, over a century ago. Let's do that again. Right. With Hollywood, especially child actors. Yeah. They can't always speak for themselves. They need somebody to speak for them. Well, and the worst part, too, is a lot of the time the parents don't have incentives to speak for their kids. You know, I know that there are lots of child actors who were the ones who were the main breadwinner in the house. Right. You know, and so when you're a person who is under an authority, who's forcing you to do this labor, and you don't have the choice to opt out of it like an an adult would. Thank goodness Taylor Swift turned out okay. Okay, don't jinx her with that. <laughs> Can you believe she's 34 years old? I know, I know, only a little older than me. You would oh. never guess it too, because she looks like she's only 22. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did you just? Uh-huh. That's our show. You. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, anything you can do above and beyond giving us your ears and eyes for an hour, like mm-hmm. click like, click subscribe, click follow, mm-hmm. anything like that would help us out tremendously. Mm-hmm. Or hey, if you know of a local hotspot or a new business, or if you want to share one of your favorite things with us, tell us about it. Info at ifafpod.com is our email. Also, time to sell your home. Think of us. You like listening? Uh, We'd love to spend time with you doing real work. Yeah. Where we promise we're less irreverent. (laughs) We're mostly serious. We're very, we're very good at that job. I promise. When it comes down to business for you, too. In in here, we're amateurs. Over there, we're professionals. (laughs) (laughs) Brokerage information on our Facebook. All right. See you next time. This episode is dedicated to the memory of my grandma, Jeannie Morgan, who always had old red vines in her house and constantly encouraged us to go out into the yard and catch snakes for fun. Um, (laughs) I actually just recently found out that she had these. So we always played with these cones in her house Mm -hmm. uh, that I thought were really cool. They had like different colored tips on them. I thought they were like some Lincoln Logs-esque toy that they'd gone out and purposely bought. They were just spools from all the quilting she did that she collected for us to play with. And honestly, they were great. So this is to her and her memory and all of the great things that she passed on to those who loved her.